And thank you guys all for eating. Sure, I really put a lot of work into the food. So. You can sit anywhere. So, hey. I wore one more now. It's Absolutely. Were you guys at the tail end? We're at the tail end, yes. Okay. The tail end. I could see it's another hype thing. It's like church, everyone says like that. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started because we promised that we'd be timely and some people have decided just to join us on zoom or on Facebook so no worries. Um, I'm Denise Gazetta, you know we launched the recruitment council back in 2018 in this very room and so over close to three years, we have done this is going to be our 27th program. So really, really quite substantial. And it really is all credit to having great content, providing those best practices that provides the value that our businesses need to receive. Uh, this is gonna be a live stream on Facebook. And so for the people that are out there on Facebook, you can just text me um, or you can send the chat, but you can text me at uh, 605-595-4355. That will allow you to interact with our speakers as we move through the presentation. Um, so just quickly, you know, um, we have our, our president, our CEO, Bob. One right? step in his face. <laughs> um, but we have a very uh, a large group of people that work. So the Sioux Falls Development Foundation really is one of the leaders of economic development and expansion with our community. In 2015, we started to move into the area of talent and workforce. In 2018, at the end of the year, I was hired. So we have built a really good presence and we have a lot of good programming. So one of the things that I encourage is if you see somebody like you wanna be on our distribution list for our um, newsletters, that's Karen Rowland. If you wanna be on social media, that's gonna be Leah. Um, if you're looking to expand, that will be Mike Gray. <laughs> and if you're looking just to bring an entire new company here, that will be, of course, Dean Music. So, um, housekeeping tips. This is live. Um, this will be a moderated presentation. Um, so before I introduce our guests, we're going to walk through a business case and how do you really build that business case scenario to build a really good internship program within your organization? Again, all the online um, attendees can text me at the telephone number 605-595-4355. So today's topic, innovative ways to increase your team's production and ROI through internships. So, and I'm just gonna ask um, before we get to this, how many people in the room have internships currently? And are you looking to increase the internships that you have and the people that you're supporting? Or are you looking to maybe, how does 2022 look for you? And this is very casual. So do you look to increase over the next year? To expand, yes. Expand, perfect. Because um, we're gonna talk about why, but before we do, um, I wanna start with the video. So in 2021, the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, along with the University of South Dakota, um, University of South Dakota's Beacon School of Business, the Greater Chamber of Commerce for Sioux Falls and the city of Sioux Falls launched a collaborative called Best Sioux Falls. Nearly 30 motivated, talented college juniors and seniors were provided in a very intense eight week experience where they were engaged with project based learnings across a very large group of employers. Okay. One of the things we saw, we have a couple of them here, is that this type of engagement allows in a business to pull those new skills, those new techniques, those strategies that somebody's learning in college into the business. So, watch a video. 
These USD students are learning by doing this fall, as part of the new Best Sioux Falls program through the Beacom School of Business. I found this program to be interesting because I like the idea of being able to interact with a local business here in Sioux Falls and get to make connections with the people and hopefully get a little bit of um, an actual experience of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really wanted to get some networking experience and get some more hands-on with marketing work and we're kind of doing kind of like data analysis. That's exactly what they're doing at the Sioux Falls Development Foundation. We are developing a salary survey and we are analyzing how much annual income people in Sioux Falls are making versus the cost of living and whether or not people are affording to live in Sioux Falls. And the reason we are doing this is that our goal is to try to develop Sioux Falls to be a more um, friendly place to live that we want to draw people here. The students meet weekly with Development Foundation Vice President of Talent and Workforce Development, Denise Gazetta, to go over their progress, and they work on their project throughout the week. Other USD students intern at organizations citywide, including city government, the Sioux Falls Regional Airport, and several businesses. They're so talented. All of these kids are studying uh, finance and accounting and marketing and then data science, which is exactly a skill set that we need inside our business community today and also in the future. So we want to do everything we can to keep these kids here. And so how we do that is we've worked very diligently with the businesses to make sure that we have really great projects for them to work on. The goal of the program is to support the supply of talent needed in the Sioux Falls business community while offering students valuable experiential learning. You know, you learn so many business disciplines in a classroom, but here you have, when you have problem is given to you, you have to apply. It's always all of the above. You know, you have to have strong quantitative techniques, analytical process, you know, uh, thinking abilities, communication and then explaining to the clients how they created value and communicating that in plain English is very, very important. So this whole engagement is a value-added engagement. I'm looking you know, towards the future in the next couple of years when I hope to be finished with school. Um, I'm looking to have my name around, having, hoping to have connections um, that hopefully I can find a uh, path to go down. The students also have taken advantage of networking opportunities, like this one hosted by the Development Foundation. We're using it from the employer side to engage and share that we are invested. From the student side, they're also getting a very good area and a very good arena with a lot of executives to test the water, to ask questions, to build those relationships, to network. And our students are learning and they are also enjoying this. You see them at the coffee shop discussing the projects, talking to the clients. You know, it's great to see that because they get to apply everything and also build relationships with the companies. I really didn't know what to expect coming into it. I wasn't sure what type of project we'd end up with. Um, however, I'm really happy with what we are doing. It's kind of opened up my eyes to the different ways that research is conducted and kind of how it's more used in um, this field. I feel like in a business you're going to be doing stuff that it's not just your major and not things that you're comfortable with. and this. Internship is kind of pushing my boundaries, getting me more comfortable with public figures and different people in Sioux Falls and just working on my, working on my skills. The plan is to build on this program, with more students and businesses participating next school year. And it would be great to have our graduates stay in Sioux Falls and South Dakota than go elsewhere. We have amazing students each year, but giving them the opportunity within the state is, it will be great. You get involved with them, you see the skill sets, the competencies, and you just can't help but be invigorated by what they bring to the table, as well as helping you solve some of the challenges that your business is currently facing. So I think it's a win-win for both parties. So one of the things, you know, to kind of, before we get into really the business case and bringing those key pieces together. I want everybody to start rethinking interns because um, the candidates are changing. We're seeing people in high school. We launched the career connections just to meet that initiative. In fact, we have somebody here that represents and is looking to place interns into businesses in another program. 
And then you have people that are in sort of, I call them international students. They've come into the country. They, they want to stay and work. How do we bring them into the internships? That's in addition to the college internships that you know provide either an extensive where it's a paid, project-based, or maybe even a basic internship. But one of the things that we're going to start seeing, and this is really exciting, is we're going to see a lot of people that are looking for career changes. Okay, And in doing so, they're going to start as interns. And that's an interesting trend. So if you think about their life expectancy, it's increasing. Since the 1970s, we are gaining about you know, three years you know, each generation. So that is why people are working longer, they're living longer, and they wanna have sort of those really good career opportunities. So that's gonna be kind of one of the things that we're not gonna talk about today, but something to keep in mind. Okay, we're gonna start doing the countdown for the top four. So the number one way that interns benefit your organization is they increase your talent pipeline. Okay. And so that's one of the things. So if you look at a year round recruiting tool, you have fall internships, you have summer, you have semester, you have quarterly. Implementing an intern program helps an ongoing pipeline gain the potential for full term employees. Okay. And here's what's really exciting. If you take two people, one started as an intern, one came in, okay, just through your normal recruiting, okay, techniques, that intern has a 30% more likely chance of staying beyond a year, okay? And that's because you're matching a cultural and finding that fit. So it's kind of a good way to test the waters. The bottom line, reduce the drain of company resources, from recruiting and hiring to cultivating a pool of very talented interns that can fill your pipeline. The second way is increase productivity and to enhance your organization's perspective. And I wish that, so this picture right here is Gary Larson. He is the president and CEO of the Trina Systems Incorporated. And one of the things that interns that he's seeing is they're bringing in a fresh perspective, okay? So gone are the days when interns were in charge of morning coffee runs and menial jobs that no one else wanted to do. In a recent NACE survey, only 8% of the interns were tasked with either clerical or non-essential work responsibilities. The other 92% were given higher level tasks like data analysis, problem solving, and logistics. So you can see where you're getting the opportunity to infuse your own employees with skills and technologies that kids are learning in college or people are learning elsewhere. An intern can really make real contributions. So they can help your full-time staff to avoid becoming overburdened by side projects. So you can use an intern versus a full-time employee that can help alleviate kind of the, the projects that somebody's facing and really have them focus in on more strategic, more higher level things. So, and then we go into enhanced perspective. Interns bring more than just an extra set of hands. Today's teams are really built around five to 15 people when you look at sort of the departments. New people bring novel perspectives and um, they help strengthen the overall skill set of the team. So a very good way to bring in interns. Okay, so now we're going to go to number three, close the skills gap and apply the latest technology. So I love these pictures because this was taken when we were working with a group from, forgive me because I have a lot of UST students here, but SDSU. And then here we had um, Schulte, Subaru, okay? So is a common problem. Newly minted grads enter the workforce lacking some skills, right? There's a lot of focuses on getting them the soft skills, um, professionalism, leadership, communication. Okay, so think about that. That's where you're spending money. A student then comes in though with what? <laughs> they have the experience of working as an intern. So you're really taking that first part of where you're socializing somebody and you're really doing that as an intern so that when you do make them as a full-time hire, they're going to hit the ground running because you've already acclimated to what you expect professionally, what you want as far as your communication styles. So it's a really good way to add that efficiency. 
Apply the latest technology in terms of techniques. College students, and we saw this with our USD interns, learn strategies and have access to techniques and technologies that bring and infuse an entire team. Okay, so it's really a good thing to bring an intern so that you can focus in on that exchange. So both sides benefit. And the number four, the number four, the last, and this was actually according to Pew Research Center, is foster develop leadership skills in your current employees. And this picture represents somebody from HDR, HDR Engineering leading a team of middle school children <coughs> through a STEM project that we had. So current employees mentor and supervise interns will gain valuable experience. This can be a great training for an employee who eventually occupy a management position. So instead of putting always interns with your senior leader, maybe put them with your mid-level managers so they can gain that experience. It does two things. It's lower stress, okay? It's lower stress because you're not taking on a full-time employee and trying to onboard them and all this stuff. You're really working on a project and that enables somebody to grow and get those leadership skills, those managerial skills and really hone them. So with that, I'm gonna introduce our panel. So we have Dean Binky from the Beacon School of Business at the, University of, at the University of South Dakota. And then we have next to Dean Binky, we have Tegan Mogan. She started as an intern fresh out of the University of Sioux Falls, and now she's with March McClendon Agency. And then finally, we have Jody Schwann, who is the owner of Sioux Falls Business Journal. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. you want me to take it away? Yeah, take okay, it away. So I'm your moderator for today. Um, thanks for being here, everyone. As Denise said, we really want this to be an informal conversation. So while I could ask questions all day, because that's what I do for a living, um, I want to hear what you are wondering about. I want to make sure that you leave um, with all the insight that you were hoping to gather from this event. So whether you're joining us online or you're here, um, please feel free to um, raise your hand or just uh, shoot out a question at any time. Um, because either our panelists will, will tackle that, I will, or we'll, we'll make Denise come back up here. There's a chair, so if needed. Uh, I want to make sure you also are very aware of all the resources that the Development Foundation provides for you um, as you look to grow and mature your own internship programs. Um, with that, I will just tell you this is a topic that is uh, very personal to me and uh, important. I would not be in Sioux Falls if it were not for an internship experience that I had in college. I did not grow up here and I went to college in Chicago and I had never heard of Sioux Falls, South Dakota when I graduated high school. And the only reason I agreed to come spend three months here when I was a junior in college um, was because Kello TV offered really an incredible immersive internship experience. I was going into broadcast journalism and they handed me a camera and a microphone and sent me out into a cornfield and the rest is history. <laughs> um, they truly created um, an experience that you know not only convinced me that this was the right profession for me, um, but that Sioux Falls, unbelievably, um, was really a place that I might like to start my career. And so I am incredibly grateful to them um, for offering that opportunity. And now I'm an employer um, and I get to do the same. So I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about what we do with interns and what we have found to be successful too, but I just really can't say enough um, about this whole approach. You know, the news industry is not known for being the most forward-looking industry in business, let's face it. Um, but one thing that we have actually done well for generations is internships. And I think that you have seen that bear out um, in our own workforce strategies. So with that, I am very excited to have both of our panelists. They're both people that I know well. Um, having helped tell their stories uh, now for many years, actually. And I joked with Tegan, I don't know, like two, three years ago, that she was the poster child for internships yeah. in this community, and she's apparently not outgrown <laughs> that, so I'm sorry. Um, she's not the only person to ever intern at Marsha McLennan, <laughs> despite what you might think um, in the marketing <laughs> that we do with her. But she absolutely has a story worth sharing. And what is so exciting is it keeps um, evolving because she just took on a new role. So we'll talk a little bit about that. That too, but let's rewind first of all um, to was it junior year at USF or senior year? I don't I'm going into my senior year, okay, yep, summer, summer before, right? Yep. 
you know, nobody goes to college to work in insurance, do they? No, no. And, <laughs> and you didn't either. No, very no. true. So yeah. um, somehow you still got connected. So how did this happen? Yep. Um, so I was actually late in finding an internship. I didn't realize at the time that internships happened or the application process happened so early. Um, I was a basketball player, so I didn't start thinking about that until after the season was done. So probably March time frame. Um, it just so happened that um, MMA was also late in their internship process. So I actually had a contact um, in our business office at USF that connected me um, there. And then I got my internship through that. So um, here I am seven years later. Um, was it literally that you needed an internship? And, and that, is, that is it. I had not thought about, right. yeah, I had not thought about, you know, careers, what path I want to go down. I was in business and economics. I loved those two things, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it yet. Um, so mm -hmm. MMA, here we come. Okay. Um, and then do you want just to talk what about that, what was it like? Yeah, that first summer. Yeah. So they did, I guess, a really good job of just letting us see, there was me and one other intern at the time, but letting us see kind of all aspects of MMA. So we spent time with our business insurance, um, salespeople, our service people, our employee benefits, which is the side that I'm in now, our safety, um, our compliance, our data analytics, um, our administrative roles. So really getting, getting to see the company as a whole. Um, and I just spent a lot of time shadowing with some different projects um, and I think like looking back I spent time with some really high performers at MMA um, I think of one particular story that I'll quickly tell I won't bore you with the details but <clears throat> I was going out on um, a meeting with a business insurance producer his name is Bill Townsend you guys have probably heard of him in the community um, but he was taking me to visit a client and I remember watching him in that meeting and I was watching the client um, and just seeing the trust that the client had in him and just the respect that they had and how engaged they were with the conversation. And then I'm watching Bill on the other side and he is like the most genuine person, wants to help them so much. Um, and just seeing that interaction was like mind blowing to me. Like this, that was kind of like my turning point of, I could actually be an insurance. Like that is, insurance is, that's the product, right? But it's the relationship that I really liked. And just seeing that, and I think like, I think back now in that like 45 minute meeting, I got to see like our mission, vision, values all in that one little meeting, you know, like rolled up just from Bill. So that was kind of um, a really neat experience for me. I think, you know, the job skills and that sort of thing is so important too. But I think just seeing the culture of an employer like that is also important and giving those interns experiences. So that's kind of kind of my story, I would say. Yeah, no, I think there are some great points to lift up there too. I mean, one, don't overlook the job shadow aspect of it too, right? And sometimes we as employers are guilty of that because we want to throw you right in and give you all this stuff to do. But there's a lot to be said for just letting you come along and watch. They're always watching. It's kind of like having a young child, right? Where like you bring the intern into the office and they're just taking it all in. Um, but you know, how your team um, acts and interacts really does matter. And the fact that they were willing to have a conversation with you that I suspect included some proprietary information, maybe some sensitive information, like there was a lot of trust letting yep. you in the room. And I think that's a good takeaway too. Mm -hmm. right? yep. um, your employer did some other things, right? Um, so she goes back for senior year, and I love this story, um, at, back on the basketball team, of course. And mm -hmm. Was it one game? Was it many games? But like the team showed up, the MMA team like started coming to her games. Yeah, there was probably I would say eight to ten um, of my coworkers at the time that came to maybe one or two of my games. But one of them, they brought like a big sign, "We heart Tegan, like go number thirty or something like that. But just I mean, really neat. Obviously, just being people and caring about you know your intern. And I don't think it was, more, I don't think it was motivated by they wanted me to stay. I think they just right. really cared about, right. You know, well, by then the they formed a relationship with you, yeah. which is what this is all about guys. It, yep. um, so it comes time for that first job. Did you look elsewhere? Was this an automatic that you were going to go to MMA? Um, it wasn't automatic. I looked a little bit elsewhere. Um, I'm trying to think back now. Um, but there was, there happened to be an opening that following spring, um, in the benefits department, which is what I knew I wanted to go into if I was going to stay. Um, and I ended up interviewing with Steve Bell, who's our CEO now. I think I had like two or three interviews with him and he was not the easiest on me. I will say that it was an interesting interview experience, but, um, yeah, so I started in that first year, I got the, the, the initial job, the first year kind of just learning and more of the technical stuff. I didn't spend a lot of time 
in my internship with the technical side. Um, but then years after that, I was promoted to, you know, a higher service level and then now the position I'm in now. So I've been actually been in three different full-time positions um, since my internship. So, how long how years is this? Um, six years full-time. So, yeah. Great. We'll come back. I want to talk a little more about your career path and, yeah. and how they've evolved because now maybe people don't work with the interns. I don't know, but um, I'll bring Dean Benke in. Um, you saw the Dean in the video and um, I just can't say enough about the best Sioux Falls program um, that he and the Development Foundation and a lot of Sioux Falls businesses brought forward um, this fall and it's coming back. Um, so you got the overview in the video, but Dean, what were the, the takeaways here as far as what businesses did right, what worked, um, what's the message to other businesses that might consider being part of this? The message to the businesses is we are here to help you. Now, as the businesses are growing, now Sioux Falls has an amazing ecosystem. It's the fastest growing city in the country. Got $1 billion of building permit last year. And so this is the crown jewel of economic development in the whole country. So when that is the good news, the bad news is the industries are struggling to hire talent. And so we want to partner with them. We want to help them in the economic development. So being the business, the leading business school in the state and in the region, and we have the best students. And two of them are right here. And I want to acknowledge um, Holland here. Holland comes from California. And she told us she's been in California and settling down in South Dakota. So that's great. <laughs> California minus one, South Dakota. <laughs> and she, you saw her in the video. Because, um, did the marketing project, right? Um, but it was fun talking to her and her fellow interns and seeing that real life work that they did that benefited the organization. Too. Oh, absolutely. It, so this engagement is, you know, I call it a co-value creation. Now, we want to create value for you. That's why this whole best, best stands for business engagement for students. Uh, so this is a project-based engagement. So we assemble student teams to work on specific projects or problems that businesses are facing. So part of the responsibilities for the student team is to understand, be a good listener first. You know, sometimes it's very difficult to be a good listener. Um, and listen to the, to, to the problem statement, talk to the project managers, talk to the people to understand what the problems are. Sometimes when people articulate what the problem is, it could be actually a symptom of a problem, but it may not be the real problem. So the more the listening you do, the better understanding you have of the problem. So that is something that they learn, something it's tough to learn that in a classroom. Uh, whereas here, you're working that real world experience. So the learning, uh, understanding what the problem is, is very important. And then you have a faculty advisors to work with. To, so you develop a methodology. How, how am I going to solve this? So that requires time management, project management, and scoping. Uh, these are a lot of those things, Jody, you asked a quick question. It is something that it's tough to learn that in a classroom, but you learn that in a real world environment. So today's generation of students are experiential learners. Uh, yes, perhaps the older audience here, that includes me too, we could sit in a two hour lecture in a class with a paper and pencil, and we will listen and we'll take notes. And then later on, we try to figure out how to apply. But today's students are amazingly talented, brilliant. They have this in their hand. They know how to connect, how to get information. And so for them, all the concepts, theories, strategies, tools, techniques they learn in the classroom, they have to apply it somewhere to really make the learning much, much more richer. Otherwise, learning becomes very abstract. And so this, so the sooner we give them that experience, the better for us. So that is a commitment we have made in our school. We have a culture of caring. We care for all the students. I tell parents, when parents ask me, why should my son or daughter come to your school? We tell them when you come to our school, our professors know them by name on day one. That may be bad news for the students, but the parents love it. And that's something they're very, very proud of. And then we have culture of innovation. Uh, and then the third component is we have a laser sharp focus towards student success. So the definition of the student success is all about creating value. So today you join a workplace, <clears throat> your employers are not going to give you six months time to create value. You've got to create value on day one. 
That's how fast-paced industry businesses are. They operate in a highly competitive environment. So the day you can, so the faster you create value for your employers, the more successful you are. So if that is a need of the industry, it is only logical for us to prepare our students while they are in school to have this real world experience. So we are very, very grateful to uh, the Sioux Falls Development Foundation. And this person standing here, she's a master mindfulness. So Denise, thank you. And, and, and the uh, Sioux Falls Chamber of Commerce and the City of Sioux Falls. And, 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 and Julie, I just found out that we both have something in common. Uh -oh. When we did <laughs> internship, you do not know what where Sioux Falls is, and I did not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somehow we both ended up here. I wondered yeah. that about you guys. Um, Dean, you are in charge of the Sioux Falls Development obviously. Um, they partner with businesses here locally, but they go all over the country for their internships. Yes. Can you maybe talk about one or two experiences? I don't care if it's in Sioux Falls or outside of Sioux Falls, but that really might sort of inspire or, or give other businesses ideas of what they might be able to do. Maybe one or two very valuable experiences that your students have had that have stood out here in recent years. Sure. You know, I will talk about a very non-traditional business. Sioux Falls Airport Authority. You now, when you talk about business, Nobody thinks of the airport okay. authority as an enterprise. Um, right. and, and yet it's a very complex organization that we all fly, we go to so called airport, we park our cars, we take a flight, go on vacation, come back. And, but, so we have a team of students that work for the airport authority uh, last fall. And the project that they dealt with was uh, helping the airport authority. Uh, with more financial analysis of the new parking garage that they are planning to build. It's a $40 million venture. Like any business, you're investing a quite a lot of money into, uh, into your project, and you want to make sure that project is successful. So these two students, they did amazing work analyzing data from them. So the airport authorities, they, when they asked them for data, they were not sure, why are you asking for all this data? So they found out the data is for predicting how many customers will be parked in the car, the peak demand versus non-peak demand, based on that they came up with a pricing model for the airport authority. They also went further, many steps further. They, they looked at their, how do you structure the debt equity? So not everything should be coming from your equity. That's not a good way to invest in business, right? You gotta have a nice debt also. So they made, they went above and beyond. And when they made those recommendations, they were shocked to find that these two students had done all this work. So that's one example I could think of. And then I could certainly have LG Everest project. Maybe you want to talk about that briefly? I can, yeah. Um, so I worked for LG Everest um, last fall for the Best SF. Um, we focused on a couple of different things. We focused on mostly was recruitment as kind of the big umbrella. So we kind of really did a lot of background research. I um, talked to some professors. I talked to the library, got some research going um, and just figuring out the best interview process, onboarding process, how to find um, people in Sioux Falls to come work for them. So it was this big recruitment and we made a presentation and hopefully the business got something out of it and some value and I definitely got value out of them. And um, it was a great experience, it really was. Those are fun to hear about. And I think about you, you know, interviewing for your first job or your other students. I mean, what you know, wonderful context to be able to share with an employer um, for what you've been able to already do in the workplace. Jody, can I add one more thing? So when we designed this Best Sioux Falls program, we are right, you know, we are still in the pandemic era. Hopefully we'll become endemic pretty soon. Maybe it's already endemic. <laughs> um, so we want to give we wanted to give our students an, an experience of new the new normal workplace. The new normal workplace is working in person and also you having the ability to work remotely. That means you have to have a lot of discipline, uh, work at the same time, deliver value. And, and it is not easy, it's deceptively an easy uh, approach to work remotely. People say, oh, I love working remotely, I don't have a go to work and find parking space, but it is not all that easy. So we thought the best way to give our students that edge, that competitive advantage over others is, that's give them the new normal work experience. So on Fridays, we had a bus to bring our students uh, at 
known, we, we left Vermilion and came here at one o'clock. Everything was precision clock work we did. So then we had, uh, and the rest of the week. So they on Fridays, they worked in person. They met with the project managers. They worked with the employees, the companies, made, uh, gave them updates, asked more questions. But then the rest of the week, they worked remotely. Then they have classes at Vermilion. So they got the taste, they got the experience in what the new normal is, work remotely and work uh, in, uh, in person. So the hybrid modality, they got the experience and they, and, they, and they really did an outstanding job. Won't you agree with that? You know, working remotely when they have classes, um, then there were many of them, teams were doing Zoom sessions with their project managers and uh, doing analysis, showing all the analysis, everything through the Zoom. And then on Fridays, they came here and they collected more data. They had more interviews, more team, you know, focus group meetings, everything happened in person. So we really prepare them for that in, in person, what are some skills you want to have? Or rather, how to have the professionals of the eye contact and managing the time. And when, when one student is talking, another student has to take notes. And then when you have a meeting, I always tell all the student teams, when you go back within 24 hours, you got to send the minutes of the meeting to all the members. And that's how you capture what happened in the meeting. It, it is how you institutionalize the memory of all the project development. So they got to learn both in person as well as- I think that's a great point because I think sometimes businesses, like if the intern is in the office all the time, it's almost like they don't know what to do with them, right? It's, it's okay to create a hybrid internship experience. And in many cases, that's actually what this generation of students is seeking. So uh, it's also good preparation for whatever their first job might become. I do want to quick touch on compensation because I think that is something that has changed maybe in the internship universe, um, you know, Denise or, or Dean Banky, what is the expectation now as far as employers compensating their interns? Yeah, I, I would say it is becoming more the norm that employers are compensating the interns for their work um, because you are having them work on projects and those projects, the one that we did was incredibly valuable. I mean, we started on a, a feasibility study looking at whether we were looking at some shifts in what we're talking about right here in income and salary. And then that went into a whole thing about housing. And so those are the kind of things, if you were thinking, you know, I would outsource this and pay a consultant X. Well, now you are, you're getting that level of expertise a lot of times because of all the information and the access that these students have. So I would highly recommend providing some type of stipend. Um, because what we did here and what is becoming more and more the norm is these internships are not credit-based, okay? So instead of somebody working a part-time job anywhere, they're actually taking their time and they're working for, to gain that experience inside of a business, so. Yep. That's a great point. Um, I'm gonna come back to Tegan. You know, sometimes I think that we in business fall into the rut of doing things the way we've always done them, right? So we've got this internship program and maybe it hasn't really changed in three years, five years, seven years, whatever. Um, and it needs to because everything in business is evolving and, and the program that MMA offers today is different than the one that you went through six years ago. How have they evolved that? What is it like to be yeah. an intern there today? Yeah, it's definitely more structured now. Um, they are doing so two week kind of segments with each of the departments. So the first, I think six or eight weeks you spend in different areas um, and then they kind of all come together and the intern actually is to pick the department that they want to spend the last four or five weeks in so that's when they get to kind of dig more into the technical stuff more into the weeds get to know more of the team within that department or area um, and kind of give them more of that that business level um, education so or, or experience that and do your teams typically have projects for them to work on or what does that look like yep let's see it's definitely projects for them to work on or um, meetings to help with again like real life experience helping with clients um, we do a lot of that obviously that is our business um, so making sure they experience you know what preparing a meeting is like gathering the data what the conversation is like um, what the follow-up after a meeting is like um, and the takeaways or how to read a room within a meeting so um, definitely very hands-on um, that last half of the internship for sure. And as I said, you're not the only former intern to be working at MMA. How successful of a pipeline, you know, that's one of the advantages yes. that he's talked about has this been for your company? Yep. So I think right now there are four 
no, five counting myself um, that were interns that are now full time. Um, and just talking about even, you know, talking about how they picked that area um, at the last part of their internship, we have one that his name is Devin, um, went to USD, but he picked the benefits team a couple of years ago, and he is now a full-time employee in the benefits department. So we got that kind of full experience um, the last half of his internship. He was so great at the data. He really understood our business, our consulting business, and how we help clients. Um, and now he's learning kind of from the ground up in an entry-level position. I think he's soon to be promoted, you know, so he it's kind of cool to see that come full circle. And I think that last half of his internship really set him up for a good beginning of his career, you know, in our benefits department. So, you know, I think it, it all sort of came together for you, um, the match with the company. But sometimes I think businesses struggle with, OK, how do I find these people? Right? How do I find that intern who's going to be the right fit for me? Are there some things that MMA does or how would you say these interns are finding you? Um, I definitely think it's our connections with the schools. Um, I know we've had some leaders connect with USD, with SDSU. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ways they've been doing that. Sometimes, honestly, guys, I think it's word of mouth. I think it's somebody yeah. here, somebody had a good experience. That's how yep. we've gotten a couple of referrals. Yeah, but... And even the one actually, when I was referred to the internship, she had just heard really good things about the company. She didn't know a whole lot about what we did or anything, but she had just said, right, it's a great company for good things, you know, trying to move in here. So, Dean, Becky, Denise, what do you think for businesses that are struggling with how to find students? What would you tell them? Well, this person over here, <laughs> she, she has a contact. And so we work, that's why we established this partnership with the Foundation, Development Foundation. Chamber of Commerce and the of Sofa. So if, if the team effort we do, and uh, as much as we reach directly to the businesses, we encourage businesses to please let Denise know, and we'll be more than happy, and we work very closely, and we, we are going to come back bigger and better. And that's what we have announced, and we are planning to have at least 60 students engaged uh, in the next round, and we want to help more and more businesses. Uh, I don't like to over promise and under deliver, uh, but at the same time, it is also teaching the students the importance of internship. A junior or a senior, uh, obviously, the, the, the university, they know what internships are all about. And, but we, that's why we do that from the very day one, from the very freshman year, uh, we bring industry speakers and come and talk about why this experiential learning is critical. And so we make them really go look for those interactions. And also in this process, you build a strong mentoring network. You know, as much as you have a faculty professor who is a mentor for you, the project managers, you all are mentors for the students. That's a, a very, very powerful uh, engagement. And, and you are teaching them so many things in the process. It's not just getting the work done in accounting or digital marketing or manufacturing, sure. That is important, but you're also mentoring them. How to manage your time, how to prioritize things, how to deal with uncertain things that you never thought, you know, be ready for the unplanned work. Things like that, they learn from you. And, and, and also how to be professional, how to dress, how to shake hands, how to say thank you, how to send a thank you note, how to write a sentence, starting with a capital letter and ending with a punctuation mark and saying at the end, thank you. Did you check the spelling of the last name of your project manager? I asked the student team the question. It cannot start with a hey. You know, you have to say, dear Miss so and so or dear Mr. So and so. Right. This old fashioned approach is very, very important. How many times have the company presidents or CEOs called me and said, Linky, your students wrote me an amazing thank you note? It is so beautifully written. And so I tell my students, they do notice. If you write a good thank you note or even if it is important, yes, dramatically correct and organized. You cannot do start here and end here with all lawyers <laughs> running here. It doesn't work. But you're teaching them that. That's part of something. That's part of learning. Do any of you have questions for the panel? I want to make sure that we, we get to those before we, we wrap up. We'll talk a few more minutes, but okay. I, I had a couple of questions. Yes, yeah. go ahead. So my position is different as a as a business operator as well. So I'm a chief executive, but we're grassroots and we're advocacy based. 
So when you think about internships and opportunities that may be attractive, you may think big, you may think broad. How, how does this align with organizations that are grassroots, small, really in the margins of things when they're building infrastructure and things like that? Certainly there's a need for marketing and all those different things, but it's not going to be shaped like it would be if um, you go to a place with 15 or 30 employees or if you have a team of one and some volunteers or two and some volunteers. How does the, how does the small business or grassroots organizations align with this? <laughs> That's a great question. Maybe we all probably want to answer that. Well, Go ahead. Get in there. <laughs> so, if I Go ahead. We, we have two tracks of student engagement with businesses. So, the best of all, I'm talking about typically brings in medium large businesses. Then, we also have a track called Coyote Business Consulting, which is specifically designed only for small businesses. And it's a business, it's a non for profit too. So we have, we have, as we speak, I have 34 teams, 68 students working in 28 counties in, in the state right now. And they all are working for small business. So we'll be more than happy to help you, uh, help you grow, help you reach your goals and objectives. We do both. Small business are the backbone of the state's economy. 60% of the workforce in the state of South Dakota is small business. So that's why we made that conscious effort to reach across the whole state. And more than 60% of them are rural communities, company businesses do so. At the same time, this is a so far specific engagement we have for this so far, where the large, the medium, the small businesses, they have this critical need for talent. So we have two strategies, one is so far centric and one is small business all up on the state. So we'll be more than happy to help you out. And I would add to that, every single business that was engaged participated and they were varying in sizes, different industries, different projects, um, which is why, you know, because when talent today thinks about the jobs, they're looking at different sizes. Not everybody in my generation, everybody wanted to work for a large corporation. That's not the case anymore. And so that's why size also comes into play really, and it does matter. And the, the matching, the communication between community partners and how we're helping. Because at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that you're happy. And so that was the success that we saw with these wonderful talented students is they were placed over a very diverse group of businesses. So, yeah, when I first started hiring interns, I really wasn't sure what kind of interest I would get. You know, I'm a two person digital media organization. Why would they come to me when they could go to a big legacy media outlet? And honestly, they were lined up at my table at the internship fair and they were bypassing traditional media um, because this generation wants to be part of a startup. They want to feel like they can leave their mark on something. They are very socially conscious. They're very mission minded. So, you know, you might attract an intern, even if you can't pay much because they care so much about your mission. And if you're flexible enough with them, they'll go get that part time job at night so that they can make money and they can still be part of your organization. So, you know, it's all about just sort of framing it up correctly and, and reaching people who care about what you do. Um, I do want to put a, a quick plug in. I was hoping to have my intern with me today, but she had something to do. Um, I started a couple years ago um, reaching out to high school students. And so in addition to college students, we now have high school interns um, starting the summer after their junior year. And we've done that two years in a row. I cannot say enough about that. Um, the exceptionally talented high school students that we have in this community, um, they have been just fantastic. And it's allowed us to grow these relationships where they come in that, that summer before senior year, they work for us a little bit during their senior year while they're in school. Um, they continue after their senior year, and I've got one now who's a freshman in college who's continuing to work for us from Ireland, and I met with her via Zoom today, um, and I've got another one who's a senior at Lincoln, um, and they're both just fantastic interns, and I get them back this summer, and I can't wait. So um, make sure you are, as we said earlier, broadening your thoughts about um, how, when, where you source those interns from, um, because there's just really, really great young talent in this community. Um, Panelists, any closing thoughts? I'm going to wrap up then. And if you want to spend a few more minutes here and, and interact with them one on one, you'll be able to do that. But so anything else before question. we go? Oh, question. Can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. The feedback that we get when we talk about this is that they say, well, I have a full time job at my, my, my real job. And now you're going to ask me to, to babysit an intern. 
and that's the wrong term, but you know what I mean. Now you're going to task me with taking care of intern. How do you, how do you, how do you guys handle that? Like taking within your organization, Jody. I mean, who's responsible for those interns that come in and, and making sure that they're doing the jobs that they need to be doing and that they're getting the education that they're wanting? Yeah, I think it's just an expectation, honestly. At MMA now, like if that is part of probably your review or whatever, if you are tasked to be a mentor for an intern, that is part of your job. Um, and I think we just do such a good job, I think, of shadowing and bringing people along. We're constantly, our industry is constantly learning anyway. So we're bringing those people along to learn with us too. So it's just, it's kind of a natural fit, I would say, there. Um, I know we get some pushback. I don't have time for this or that, but I think with, you'll find the right people that are going to be the good mentors for for those interns. So yeah, it's not a fit for everyone. I it falls to me. Obviously, we're a small organization, so I pretty much manage them, and it is extra work. But at the end of the day, the energy that they bring to the room, just having them there, is is so worth it to me. And um, being able to mentor now, I have for for so many students. I mean that's a big part of why I feel like I do what I do to, you know, to try and, and grow this profession and, and give young people opportunities because full circle, um, that's why I'm here. Somebody did that for me. So um, you have to pay it forward and, and it pays off really all the way around. So a couple of years ago, we had a really good intern. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do think that is one of the things that draws as we were talking and preparing for this, you know, we had, experiences that make us want to give back and that is more becoming the norm as you have a lot of organizations that are taking this on so we focused a little bit on all the benefits and they're really dollar financial benefits because there is a cost associated when you go out and recruit people if you had a better strategy like interns you save a lot of money but the bottom line is you know the people that should be involved for people that were interns themselves because they know how to turn those experiences in to really meaningful. So with so, that. Yeah, closing thoughts though, if you do want to continue this conversation, just like Dean Benke said, reach out to Denise. Um, she will get you connected. There is a, a space for you. Um, there's a match for you. And, and we definitely want you to be um, part of this building effort, um, which is really shown to be effective and it's gonna be fun to watch it continue to grow. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Work, next re Workforce Recruitment Council meeting is gonna be approximately when, do you know? Uh, the next one will be uh, virtual. So okay. we'll have in the middle of March. Um, and today's also took place as our first relaunch of our Talent Thursdays for 2022. Right. So thank everybody for staying online a little bit longer than what yep. we wanted, but really good panel, really good topic. And hopefully this brings a lot of value to your businesses. So, so let's get a round of applause for our panelists.